Up Crafts. So glad you could join me again today. Today we are going to be working on the final item that I am putting together in the wine theme basket that I am donating to a local charity auction next weekend. So the theme is wine, so I thought it would be really fun to make these wine glasses. So what I've done is I've etched the front of the glass with cheers and then I have added glitter and it's this rose gold glitter and I just absolutely love the look of that glitter. So we are going to be starting our project today out in design space. I'm going to show you how I put together this design. It does use a re the reverse weed function and then I'm going to show you my method for adding glitter to my glasses. Now these glasses cannot go in the dishwasher but they can definitely be hand washed. So I've put together a set of two to add to my basket and at the end of the video I will show you the picture of the completed basket I think it turned out really cute so give me a second to get my camera angle changed and we will get making we're gonna start this project out in design space so you need to come up with an idea of what you would like to etch on your wine glass now what I'm going to etch is the word cheers so what I do first is I'm going to go out and I'm going to look for an image and I'm going to type the word cheers. There's so many options you can pick from inside of design space. You can also go out and bring in your own um, image, but I just like to see what I have available out here. And I'm just going to go straight with the word cheers because we are going to add glitter on this wine glass also. So I don't want to overdo it. So we're going to start with the word cheers. Now I've already measured um, to see what size I should be doing this and it looks like it needs to be about 2.417 and I'm going to let Cricut or Design Space justify it. Okay and so right there now the thing I worry about when I look at that size is that two and a half is a decent size width but that height of only being less than an inch, I'm a little worried about the size. So I'm going to take off the unlock and so I can move the proportion and I'm going to go to a 1.3. So I've measured my wine glass and I know that this image would fit very nicely. Now when we want to etch something, I just want the word cheers etched on this glass. So to do that, I need to bring in a shape and we are going to use the reverse weed method on this. So let's say there's my shape is about three. Let's go a little bit bigger on the shape. So let's go to a 3.3 by 3.3. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to arrange this so it is in the back. So I'm going to move it to the back. And then I want to, this is really important, I want to center. So I'm going to hit my shift key and I'm going to hit the cheers over here to the side so you can see both areas are highlighted. And I'm going to go to a line and I'm going to go to center. Okay, so now with both of them still selected, I am going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to pick out slice as my next option. So with the slice, what I want to do is just pull my circle and I can get rid of these um, these images that are left because we're just going to be working with this um, circle. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to be doing two wine glasses because this is going to be going in the auction basket. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that right here. And so I've got two of them. Then I am going to go to make and once we get into make it is going to be really important that we do not choose mirror image here. Okay, This is going to be put right onto the glass and then we're going to image, excuse me, we're going to etch right to it. So I'm going to join you over at my mat and we will make this in design space. So we've got our mat all loaded with our vinyl and I've already loaded it in the machine and my Cricut button is going and so I'm going to press go 
and we're gonna let the machine do its work. So our machine's all done, so we're gonna unload our mat. And I'm gonna go ahead and push my Cricut back so I've got a little bit of workspace. And remember how we've always said we unload our paper from the back and bend it off. I always like to hang my mats up as soon as I'm done and put that protective cover sheet over it. And then we are going to do the reverse weed. So once again, like you guys know, I like using my pin pen from 651 Vinyl. And what we're gonna do is first I'm gonna take away that outer layer around the circle. I'm just gonna peel that off. I always have garbage cans at each one of my workstations, so I'm gonna get rid of that excess. And then for the reverse weed, all we're gonna do is remove the cheers from the inside. And since this is cursive, it's gonna pull up really nice. And if I just, and the only thing you gotta watch for is those inside of the letters to make sure those are all coming up fine. Looks like it's cut great. It's pulling up, whoops, I spoke too soon. So that's an example of a letter coming up and not cooperating. So I'm just gonna grab him. I should have varnished this down a little bit. I was getting a little cocky, but that's okay. We just wanna make sure it stays. And I'm gonna grab it. So I've got it in my finger so I can put it back on. And that does happen. Good practice is to varnish your item down first, and I skipped that this morning, and I apologize for that. There, I caught that guy. Okay, so let's get that one little piece back on, and then we will be ready to add our transfer tape. And this guy's gonna not cooperate with me today. There we go, got him back on, okay? So now what I like to do is I am going to go ahead and trim this since I'm gonna have two glasses to do. And then what I am going to do is I'm gonna take some of my transfer vinyl that I like, my 651 vinyl. I'm just gonna cut out a piece of it, adhere it onto um, the logo and then we will get applying this to our glass Okay, so let's apply this image and what I did is we completed our reverse weeding I have applied my Transfer tape and I like the 651 um, Gridded transfer tape for this process and so what I'm gonna do is If I get it burnished all the way so let's there we go. Peel it. I always like to peel it from the back. That way I can make sure that all of my inside of my letters are sticking. Okay. And then I've got a towel I've got my glass laying on. And I'm just going to eyeball. I like to do the centers first. I'm just going to put the top of that circle at the top of the glass. And then I'm not going to press it down yet. I'm going to take it and just very carefully work my letters, okay? And I'm going to pull it as I do it. If you pull it, you normally can work out any air bubbles. Now, if this wasn't rounded, it would be a lot easier, but it always causes a little bit of havoc when you're putting it on a wine glass. One trick I've learned is if you cut the vinyl a little bit, it helps. But first, I wanted to just try to get it on. And what I, I just, I just work it. And this part takes a little bit of time, but it saves you if you take the time to really, really work this. So you can see I've got that one. 
talked about them. Now I will tell you that it does not matter if your transfer tape is wrinkled. It's the vinyl that we're really worried about. Here. I'm just pulling it as I put it on. Kind of hard, I know, for you guys to be able to see. But and then we can we're gonna work it after we get the transfer tape off, okay? So my transfer tape has definitely got some wrinkles in it, which is fine. So let's go ahead and take that off, find a corner where it's adhered good, and work your transfer tape off. Now you want to make sure it's not pulling up any of the design. So again, speed does not win the race here. Take your time. Okay. So I'm going to pull that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how my design is on here. And I can see I've got a little bit of an air bubble that's coming down from that H. So I just picked it up and I'm smoothing it back down. Okay, You're fine with the creases that are up here. Those don't matter at all. Um, you just don't want any air bubbles around any of your lettering. Okay, so I'm just very gently pulling that one back up and putting it back down. Okay, and then sometimes I can just use my fingernail to work around some of the spots. And other times I need to pull it up. Okay, and then around this edge here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back up and see if I can pull it and spread it so that it is not got a crease. And then work it with my fingernail. Work out each one of those. Okay. right there and I'm just using my fingernail. I just don't want air pockets in there because this etching green, anything it touches, it is definitely going to show. Okay, so I think we've got it pretty well covered there. You can see I've definitely got creases out here, but that part's perfectly fine. Just take another double look and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some painter's tape just to protect around the glass. Um, just in case any of my etching cream decides to run, I want it to hit the painter's tape and not the glass. Any place this etching cream hits, it is gonna etch into your glass. It's pretty thick, so it really doesn't run, but I just like to be cautious. So we're gonna do one more whatever reason my painter's tape is putting all over the place. Okay. okay. So then I'm going to take one more look at my glass. And I see I got a bubble pretty close there. Really working it with my fingernail. Okay. Okay. I think we've got it. Okay, and I'd already done another one. So we've got both of our glasses that we're going to be doing all done. Just double checking all the way around that I don't have any air bubbles, and I think I'm good to go. So I'm going to lay my wine glasses like this and keep them apart from each other for right now. Now I use Etch All Etching Cream. Armor Etch is another one that's available on the market. But I got introduced to Etch All, and I'll tell you, I bought this bottle, and I've been using it for probably close to two years now. So it's it's definitely um, a great product. So I'm going to take it, and I always say it looks like butterscotch pudding, um, and I'm just going to cake it on there. Now, the cool thing about this etching cream is that we're not going to waste it. So when we're all done with this process, we're going to wipe the excess and put it right back in the jar. 
and so that. So let's see, air filters there. Just double checking. Now some people put gloves on when they're putting etching cream on. As long as you're careful and not get it on your hands, you're fine. So I'll go ahead and just cake it on really good so you can see. Sometimes I peek in the back just to see if it's all covered. Okay, and then I can set this up. It's thick enough that it's not going to run. Okay, I like to do that double look one more time. Looks good. And we're going to apply. So that's as easy as it is with the etching cream. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for 15 minutes. And after that 15 minutes is over, we will wipe as much excess as we can back into the jar and then we're going to go to the sink and wash our glasses and peel off the excess vinyl. So I am going to let this sit and I will be right back with you after our 15 minutes um, is up. Okay, so we are back. And what I'm going to do now is just like I said before, we can save this etch all. And so I'm literally just going to use my same paintbrush and I am going to take it right off just like that. Still got my painter's tape on, still got the vinyl on, and we're just removing the excess on the glass. So now once I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and take these to my sink and I'm going to rinse them off. I'm going to remove the vinyl and I will be right back with you and show you what it looks like. So I've cleaned the glasses, I've removed the excess tape and the vinyl and the next step we're going to do is we are going to mark off the rim of the glass. I like to leave a little bit of space between the glitter and the top of the glass. So this is a technique I've used and this is a dry erase marker. I've got the glass upside down and I am just tracing and this just gives me a even line all the way around the top of the glass. And then what we're going to do is we are going to use electrical tape to mark off that part of the glass. Now you can use painter's tape, but I have found electrical tape just has a little bit of play in it and I can really maneuver it when I'm making these type of glasses. So I'm just going to follow along that dry erase mark that I put around the top of the glass. And the reason why we're adding this tape is we're blocking off where we don't want the glitter to be applied. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue and I just like to make sure I'm following that line so it's an even line all the way along the top of the glass. So I'll just make sure that's adhered and just double check it and look at it around the glass. I like to leave a little bit of a lip of the tape for it to come off later. Next, what we're going to do is I like to put a V um, line around the cheers. So, but first what we want to do is I have decided not to glitter the stem of this glass. So I'm going to start by taping off just at the top of the stem so we can have a clear line. And I apologize, I got a little bit out of camera angle here, but you'll be able to see I'm just blocking off the bottom. Now you can definitely glitter the entire bottom of the glass, but in this case, I decided that I just wanted to glitter the top part of the glass. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue on with the electrical tape. And back to that V I was saying, we are going to put a V that encases the cheers on the front of the glass. So I like to start by laying my glass down and I try to center this. So I'm starting at the bottom of the glass and I'm bringing it up to the top. And then I'm just making sure that there's no air bubbles in that tape. And then I'm doing the exact same process here on the other side. And so this is definitely just an eyeball look at what we want to do with the V. Now you can get creative here. You can um, tape off um, a different area. This is just one way that I like to do it, and I just like the look of it. Once you get down this technique, you can do all different things with the design of where you want your glitter versus what was etched. So now I'm just double checking and making sure that everything is taped like I want it to be taped, and I'm double checking to make sure that that V at the bottom is coming to a crisp angle at the bottom because we are going to put Mod Podge on and glitter and so we really want that to look very straight. So you may need to trim your tape just a little bit for that to work for you. So now I've got my tape on. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to get my Mod Podge out and I just use regular Mod Podge for this. Now some people use the dishwater safe, which you definitely can do, but I put a clear coat finish on mine and so I have not been using the um, dishwater safe. But what you want to do when you're applying your Mod Podge is you want to quickly put it on, but you want it to be very even. So you only want to put Mod Podge where you want glitter to go. And so I'm just putting a thin coat of Mod Podge on my wine glass. And this is on the back side. It's not where my etching is at all. And I apologize that I got a little off camera here. But you just want to bring it and just make sure that there's no clumps in your Mod Podge. So I like to work up like I am here with the brush and just making sure it is a nice and even application of the Mod Podge. This is going to really help with the glitter. If you have clumps in there, your glitter is going to clump and you're definitely going to see that on your wine glass. So I'm just double checking it. I'm going to go ahead and put that off to the side now. And I have chose to use a rose gold. Now notice I've got a piece of paper underneath and I like to do that because we're going to be able to put our excess glitter back into our container. So I'm being very generous here as I am applying the glitter to the wine glass, making sure I get it fully covered where all that Mod Podge is. And I like to twirl my glass like I am here. It works really well to make sure it's fully covered. This is another reason why sometimes I choose not to do the stem because you're able to hold that stem as it's going around. And then I'm just gonna bang off my excess glitter and check to make sure that I've got it covered. I see some areas that I could add a little bit more of my glitter and so that's exactly what I'm doing here. Bang off the excess there, tap it off. I shouldn't say bang, you don't want to break a glass, but tap off your excess glitter and then I like to do a nice check there just to make sure that I've got everything covered. Again, just doing a little bit of extra there. Now in some cases you may need a second coat of glitter and if you do, 
I like to let my Mod Podge fully dry um, before I move on to a second coat. So I went ahead and completed both of the cups um, with the glitter. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to remove my tape while the glitter is still a little damp. And I always pull down on the tape to take that off. And so I'm just being very careful as I pull at it. Now, one trick I have learned is if you leave a tail on your tape, it really helps when you are removing the tape at this point in time. So this is all I'm going to do during this step is I'm going to remove the tape and I'm going to do that for both of the wine glasses. Here you'll see I'm just finishing up removing the tape from the wine glasses and they look really nice. They've got a clear crisp cut to them with the glitter and the next step we're going to do is we are going to reapply some tape and we are going to cover up everything that does not have glitter on it and we are going to get ready to put our final coat on our wine glasses. And now I know this seems crazy, but we are going to retape the glasses and you just be really careful that you are going to line up your electrical tape right next to where you've glittered. Now the reason why we didn't apply our final coat of clear coat last time is had I done that, I would take the chance that I would be pulling off any glitter that had attached itself to my tape. So to be safe, you remove the tape after you glitter and then we are re-taping so that we can take our glasses outside and we're going to spray a clear coat on them to seal in your glitter. Now one thing here you'll see, I'm being very careful that I pick up all along the edge of right where I've glittered. If there is a little bit of a gap, you're perfectly fine, but really we don't want to put an overspray um, any more than we need to on the glass. For one, you want your glass to be crystal clear where that etching was. So I'm just going to take the time to retape it. I'm going to go around the top again of the glass. I am going to go around the bottom of it. And then you will see I am also going to add a piece of paper just to help um, cover up where the cheers is on the glass. And the only reason I'm using paper there, you could definitely use the electrical tape but it just speeds up the process just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part. You'll just see me continuing to tape up the glass. So I finished co covering my glasses. And as you can see, only the glitter is showing. And so I am going to take these glasses outside and I am going to give them a coat of this clear coat. And this is what our finished product looks like. So after I took the glasses outside and I applied the clear coat, I removed the tape immediately and I let the glasses sit overnight and dry. And then I took them to the sink and I washed them. These glasses cannot be put into the dishwater, dishwasher, excuse me, but they can definitely be washed with care. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on my etched wine glasses with a glitter highlight. I also wanted to share with you 
that I add in a care card on each one of my cards and here's an example. And as I promised, I wanted to show you a picture of the finished gift basket that is all Cricut inspired. As you can see, we've got the, the cutting board in the back. We've got some infused coasters I did. I did a charger there with some vinyl on it. And then of course we have the wine glasses we just completed. As always, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And if you like this project, please click on the like button below and subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Also, check me out on my blog at funstuffcrafts.com. If you have any questions about this project, please leave a comment below and I'll also link supplies that I use for this project below. Thanks and have a great day.